Here's the Duffin Up Podcast. Alright, Duff Daddies and Duff Mamas, we have the first real ever local Duffin Up show here tonight. Besides the four boys, the three boys tonight, because Tim, Tim's back back at the firehouse. We uh we have a true local legend here. We have the man who took over Spargo Golf from the living legend himself, Tom Spargo. Uh, we have a, he was a fantastic college golfer back in the day. He has taken from his mini tour days. He has come into the world of club building. Absolutely crushing it. We got John Pannone on the line tonight. And I really hope I said your name right. I hope it's not Pannone because if it's Pannone, I'm screwed. But we got oh, yeah. John Pannone. Absolutely, on. absolutely nailed it. <laughs> yes. Let's go. Dang. John uh, Pannone. <laughs> Thank what? you so much for having me. Absolutely, man, dude. This we are is going to so be excited. fun. We I are didn't, so you know, excited to talk to you. When we first connected, I didn't realize how local everybody was. This is pretty cool. Yeah, we got Mikey in, uh, in Rumford. We got Brendan up uh, in Attleboro. I'm, I'm in Brookline now. So we're all local guys. So we're all from the Attleboro and then Rhode Island area growing up. So. Brian, you're I got you're the farthest now. You're no, Brian, officially... you're a Lincoln. You're a Lincoln, Rhode Islander. <laughs> it's just... crazy how you've switched to Boston. You're going to Boston College football games now, Brian. <laughs> That's because there's nothing me. else to do. It's it's you hard. turned into me, and you watched them lose too. That's the worst part. I I had no say in how they won or they lost. I was there for the <laughs> the free ticket, the drinking, and uh, it was Labor Day. Got to let loose. But no, I. I know. I was just telling him, Mikey, that uh, I still have Rhode Island plates, so I haven't uh, haven't strayed too far. Uh, yeah, it's Rhode Island. When I moved out to, to yeah, Bias. same with when I moved to California, I went all the way. Never changed the four hundred one area code. Never changed the plates. Oh, changed yeah. changed the license for for reasons, but that was about it. It's funny, I um, because as as a Rhode Islander. Uh, the obviously there's one area code for all the fo- uh, all the phone numbers 401 <laughs> and I actually was calling a uh, golf club in Hawaii and uh, he was transferring me to um, another another golf course and he just read off the number without the area code so Hawaii also I think has the same like 818 same. <laughs> so it, you know it like, keeps it simple yeah it's so simple for right us. like it, it was yeah it was easy for for me i feel like anybody else from another state would have been like what's the first three numbers or like you're missing three numbers but as a Rhode Islander, i was like it's got to be like Rhode Islander. Yeah, it's got to be the same one it's good <laughs> <laughs> it's too funny oh uh, unbelievable way to start the golf podcast guys i am absolutely pumped with that and i forgot to turn on my microphone too so this is absolutely going fantastic <laughs> but anyways uh first question to you john uh, when it gets a little bit slow down there, how many times have you gone over to, uh, to Mulligan's Island and done a little bit of, uh, putting around over there? Did we, wait, did we so, just uh, an introduction, what he does, who he is, what's going on? Cause for the listeners, yeah, we'll, we'll lead into that eventually, right? right? Yeah, we, we knew where he's from. We just don't know what he's all about, but I we, gave, I gave the speech, Brian, okay. <laughs> I gave the introduction, but yes, for everyone who does not know, and I know we started off with the local boys. Uh, for everyone who does not know, uh, John Pannone uh, took over from, from, from Tom Spargo. He took over Spargo Golf. Uh, it is a fantastic um, club, I would say, like cut, cl- custom club building, club fitting. Um, I know you guys do put, like custom putters, too, and everything like that now as well, right? You guys kind of yeah, took you, over. You guys do you, everything. You nailed it. Yeah, you ah, did all, all, so. all three of us. You're absolutely on fire right now. Cumberland, Rhode Island, right? <laughs> I mean, not Cumberland. Jesus, Cranston. One of Cranston. the two. One of the two seats. And you're, Brendan's not a Rhode Islander, John. You got to give him a pass. Yeah, we <laughs> we just let it go. We move on. So so you where did you grow up, John? In Rhode Island. So I, I grew up in East Greenwich. Um, went to EG High and then went to URI for a couple of years. Uh, transferred down to South Carolina Beaufort, little INAI school in um, off of Hilton Head. Oh no! Um, but oh, don't yeah. We're back. You got it. You've done. We're we back. So the last podcast that I listened to oh. was the open review, and uh, you're talking about, <laughs> about Harvard Town. I started laughing. Of course, every podcast he has to mention. Oh, yeah, Town. yeah. No matter which one you listen to, it's no, don't got get it out of the way. Yeah. Got it don't get going there. Get back in the way early. There. Time, the early we can from it. Wait, oh. so where'd you grow up playing golf around here? Uh, Potawatomi Golf Club. Okay. 
yet to play there. It's pretty, pretty private, right? That's yeah. Yeah. It was uh, li- just all golf, um, 18 holes, small little clubhouse. Um, but yeah, it was an absolute blast. And if you were my wondering, da- my yes, dad grew up. That was, Oh, sorry. If you were wondering, yes, I do have a fantasy draft also going on, but don't worry about that. Wow. This is good for my you. Full attention. Good for you. Oh, like your that. team's going to blow, dude. My team yeah, is going this is to gonna be, this is be, gonna be a tough horrendous <laughs> right now, but I don't care. Um, or put your focus in that either one. Oh no, absolutely not. I'm, <laughs> I am so focused on this, but anyways, so John, um, growing up in Rhode Island, obviously, all New England boys here. Uh, I would say it is difficult. I would say it's it's probably pretty difficult to try and pursue a career in golf, being from the New England area, especially from, uh, you know, not just especially from Rhode Island, but like being from the New England area, it is very difficult to kind of get a foot in since we do not have golf all year round here. Um, so is that what kind of made you decide to move down to to the South for a couple of years and then out to California? Uh, yeah, this, the South part was my brother had gone down to that school when it was a two year, like prep school kind of uh, thing. And I did not really do all that well at URI. So I was looking for a change. Um, so going down there, uh, I was kind of really just a caddy and they had started a program at USCB. And then I stayed there for like four, four years, about four or five years. Uh, but that was where, you know, we had the because you remember the the Eagle Quest Golf Dome over in, in West Warwick. Oh, yeah. um, so that was our place we practiced in as a junior uh, in high school. You could hit balls all winter, you know, 120 yard deep, 100 yard high. But um, yeah, it's not the, the easiest thing to do. Uh, but once I got down south, it was kind of eye opening of what was what was available. That was the crazy thing growing up is that this, I, I actually have never been to that, the, the dome in Cranston. Um, but it, I, I, growing up, I, I played um, golf at LaSalle and, um, and like, it's, that was, everyone always talked about it, the dome. Have you ever played the dome? And it's like, in my head, it's this mythical, <laughs> mythical, like uh, place that I was like, it sounds magical being able to play golf in the middle of the winter, but uh, I've never, never made it there. Is it, is it not there anymore or is it still? So it went down. Oh shit. So we've been at Spargo has been at Mulligan's Island for now, 14 years. Um, so it, it went down 14 years ago because that's where Tom had his second shot. So he started in Narragansett at the driving range on, um, Bus Route 1A. No, yep. Where? Yep. that was, that, that was Spargo's we, range. No, we get that back. We, that that place is still just nothing it's just an open open spot of land so every we, time we i actually, drive by it i see the driving range i want to drive I, it. So it's it's that was the original that was the original spargo driving range. Ooh, he owned the range wow. his uh him and his brother and then they went to he went to uh the dome uh did fittings there and owned the bar that was in there as well so he was kind of like the he was like cheers you know he was running the bar and fitting everybody and then when the dome went down, he went over to Mulligan's and I started there in 2016, but I had known him through, uh, when I was at URI, we played, we practiced at the dome all winter. So Spargo, we hung out with Tom and he did all our clubs and all that stuff. So I'd known, I had known Tom for a long while before I started working for him. And so how, how did you get into it? Uh, were you into being a club fitter, being into, I know you're in the industry because you're golfer and, and all that but uh, the fitting side strictly tom the building side i've always always was interested in golf clubs my dad you know my dad was kind of a club junkie um loved to not really tinker the way like i build clubs but he just always had a bunch of golf clubs around so um uh, being you know being fortunate growing up at, at potawatomi the the cart barn kids were like 20 at the time when i was a little kid so they really let me have the the lay of the land so I was cutting clubs and regripping clubs at really a young age then when I got to college in South Carolina my assistant coach was a master club builder he was we were living in our coat my head coach's second house he was renting it out to people he rented it out to me and this guy TJ and TJ turned our garage basically into what my workshop looks like now he, was, he taught me how to frequency and MOI clubs uh, pulling them apart, putting them back together, swing weighting them. And then when I'd come home, um, 
that kind of got into it that way, but never really pursued a job in the game. Um, and then once I turned pro uh, in 2012, um, I always would go back to Spargo and get my clubs checked out when I was home. And he'd let me just hang around the shop and slowly teach me how to build clubs without me kind of knowing that he was planting the seed very early that um, he, he knew the road I was taking was going to be very difficult as a, as a pro, uh, you know, chasing that way. Um, so he, he always kind of peppered me when I come home. He's like, you know, you can always, always learn this. This is, this is a fun living. You know, you get to just hang out in here and, and play with golf clubs. So in 2016, I, I took the plunge and, and came back and, and apprenticed under him. Um, and then kind of the rest is, the rest is history. Well, I, you said you learned under a master club fitter. Like, what are you like? But after all, that seems like a lot of experience from different people getting input. And then like, you're still pretty young. You, yeah. I owe, I owe, I owe a couple people probably a lot of, uh, a lot of money because the education I got for kind of for free was, was looking back now, you know, uh, this is November is going to be my fourth year owning the shop. Looking back, it's just kind of still mind blowing that those are, those are the two people that I learned under were very, very good, um, you know, club builders, uh, the guy, TJ, real good buddies with a bunch of nationwide players at that time. Um, yeah, it was still nationwide, uh, and, and just getting to, getting to meet those guys and, and, you know, hang around those, those types of people was, was impressive. That's, I mean, that it's, it's such a great story to hear that too, because I know, I, I think I posted something today on, on Instagram and, and I was talking to you about it too. It was, uh, it was this, this, this picture of a, of a guy who had these old Titleist clubs and it was like, Oh yeah, this guy used to play on, like this guy used to play on tour. He are on uh on the corn fair on now the corn fairy tour. I think they said like nationwide or, or web.com. Yeah, uh, whatever, whatever it was Hogan called tour, at the time. Whatever, it yeah. was. <laughs> whatever it was called at the time, right? So so they're on, so he's on there. And like it looks exact like you know those tiger ti- the tiger Nikes are the same way. Like the ball imprint is just the groove is gone and it's just a freaking ball imprint. He's like, Yeah, he showed up 10 minutes before, didn't even <laughs> swing a club, goes out there, shoots 67, and you could tell he was hung over. I'm like, and I'm out here being like, oh yeah, like. If I got really good, like if I continue working on my game, like I could, I could try and qualify for like some of these events or anything like that. It's like, no, no, you can't. No, you cannot. It was, uh, yeah, it's so eye opening how many good golfers. Right? And then, yeah, go, going back to the original of, you know, coming from Rhode Island, uh, moving down south was like opening, opening your eyes kind of halfway of how good players are. And then moving out to California or Arizona first, and then California is just like, holy shit, they're, they're just, it doesn't, and there's all Americans everywhere. There's four team, all, four time all Americans. There's guys who've won 40 PGA, you know, I'm sorry, 40 mini tour events that you've never heard of. Um, guys who have never had a real job in a decade and played, you know, mini tour golf um, and have never made it past second stage Q school. It, well, it's it's like- absolutely wild. It's like that guy, Mike Visaki last year, that had <laughs> yeah, all right? the same thing. He, he won, like, I think they said 60, like, Florida Tour event. He's won, like, 60 Florida Tour events in his career. Yeah, he went out to uh, – he just won Long Beach Open this year. Um, I used to play in that out there. $20,000, you know, first prize. Uh, he shot, like, 28 under par. Like, absolutely blew that course away. Um, and, you know, knowing those courses, it's just like, <laughs> what course did he play? <laughs> That's ridiculous. I'm like, he doesn't have a PGA under, tour under 90. <laughs> yeah. And, and we had on uh, Evan Singer from, from the par train and he's, he's friendly with uh, Chris Nagel, who is like known as like the best players to never have status. And it's like, you just go through like all of that dude's accomplishments, like on mini tours and on everything. And it's like, like, how have you never gotten the break? It's like, not, yeah, you get, how have you never gotten that? Who are you, who are you drafting? I know that came off real quick. Yeah. What? Yeah. what? No, what? It, no, let's. Can you, I like it. You so need I need a, I, I have my wide receivers right now are Devonte Adams and AJ Brown. And I took Deandre Swift. I'm thinking either David Montgomery or Travis Etienne for a running back. Who else? I mean, there's still T Mac. We still got DK Metcalf here, but like, I need a running back. 
Stevenson or Ramondre? Uh, no, he's going in like the 11th round, but <laughs> I'm all in on him. Give me Ramondre. I mean, there's got to be other names in running back around there, no? Oh, yeah. There's like Brees Hall. We got Gabe. Oh, shoot. I'm a, I got 10. You know what? We're going Montgomery, Terry McLaurin. Montgomery. What? We went, to, <laughs> we went Terry McLaurin. I like I it. That was, wide receivers. That, that was exciting. That was exciting. <laughs> but, yeah, uh, Chris Nagel, that was the guy who played at Arizona, right? I, I I bel- yeah, he's a St. Louis native. He's like, I think he's like 38 now or 39. But yeah. yeah. So he was, he was close to my brother's year. Um, gotcha. And that, that guy was, he came out to the Northeast Dam every year. I think he won it one of the years. And one of the years I was caddy for my brother. And it's just like, yeah, that, that guy's going to be on the PGA tour. No, no doubt. This is actually his, his signature right here. Um, I got God, that's a, awesome. <laughs> <laughs> like a little little signature, which is funny because I hadn't even really known. I, I'm not as well versed on on the tour as Brendan is, and uh, he just signed it during one of the practice rounds. All the oh, tours, so all the tours, baby. All, I am here. So I, I am. Tours. I am the junkie for the <laughs> like. Uh, I I remember um, we do like daily fantasy a lot. And I remember talking to Mike about it and I was like giving him names and, and Mike was like, who the heck is Sahith the Gala? Why are you telling me to put money on him? And he went out and, and finished in second place at the, uh, at, at, in Arizona this like, oh, year. Oh, that was the guy. <laughs> Will Zalatoris. I was the first one on the Will Zalatoris train too. Oh, uh, good. For, yeah. Yeah. Uh, nice work. <laughs> oh yeah. But, uh, but no, I, I just think it's like, and, I would love to hear like your side of it, like going. So I know we're kind of like going back to that too, but like how crazy was it seeing those, seeing like players like that, where it's just like, you're trying to make it and you're trying, trying to be on a pro, you know, you're trying to make it as a professional golfer and you just see guys out there who are either like a couple years younger than you, who are just ripping, absolutely ripping it up. Or like if you're playing at an amateur event and you see a guy and you're just like, I, I don't know if that's ever going to be me, but like, what is it like kind of being out there and, and on that grind and, and just going to like all of these different places, trying to, trying to win? The first year was, uh, it, it felt like it went in like fast pace. Everything moves fast. Cause I was, so I took a year off after my sophomore year caddied and kind of got my grades together to go back to college and be an athlete, you know, be a, be an actual like student athlete. Um, and then because of, I broke my collarbone my so- sophomore year, I kind of scammed the system, got some years of eligibility, and then I turned pro at 23. So I was a bit late in terms of at like 2011, 2012, Ricky had just signed with Puma for like $10 million and he was 20 years old. <laughs> um, and we had just, I had just played in the players am against him, Patrick Reed, like that whole class of player. And it was just like, oh, I don't, I don't know, you know I, I don't know if I'm that good. I don't know, I don't know if I can handle that. Um, and then my, you know, getting out there, um, I played on this national pro golf tour. Uh, it was like a, it was it's in its second year um, when I joined it. So we had to go through Q School down in Florida. They were going to run three events in certain parts of the country. You had two weeks off, three weeks on, two weeks off, and they ran. It was a, it was an awesome first like six weeks uh, or six events because they or i'm sorry nine events so three stops we were in florida california and uh, um, and michigan and then we ran three more events in arizona and the guy didn't pay like 1.8 million dollars in prize fees and kind of just disappeared class action lawsuit uh if you heard of the big money classic I wanted to yeah. talk to you about that because I was go- I was <laughs> so I was a part that of weekend. that I was a part of that tour. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> so that was my first year, and luckily I didn't play good enough to be owed that much money. Um, I think it was like three grand, but a buddy I was traveling with was owed like nineteen thousand and some change, and that was you know I don't he doesn't play he doesn't play mini tour golf anymore um, because because. <laughs> You know, you don't, you don't lose, you lose that type of money. It's, it's, it's kind of, unless you go on another heater, it's, yeah. it's going to be a tough go. But yeah, I, I was a part of that. It was, 
it was awesome for the time being. It was, they had grand plans of being a, a feeder tour to the corn ferry tour uh, or nationwide at that time. Um, the year before I had a couple buddies who had played on it in uh, uh, Hilton head area and they had cleaned up and they were just like, dude, if you're turning pro, you got to join this place. It is, you know, it's four rounds, uh, two day cuts. You get three, uh, three practice rounds, you know, proper professional golf. And, and you get to learn how to be a pro at a young age um, and, and early on. So it was, it was a blast until it wasn't. See what Why happens you think- when you go away from Hilton Head? See what happens? If, if, if I, the tour would have stayed I'm right around if, there, would have been perfect. If I didn't move to Arizona, you know, <laughs> that's where it all went sideways. Why do you think like something like that failed? Just do you have any insider? or just? Um, the, so the guy the guy like during all of that I've got to go back into the memory banks uh the big one was he didn't even use his real name he's kind of like a scam artist type guy um so he was basically just Ponzi scheming paying from one event to the next and didn't have any sponsorship lined up and just kept promising these I think it was close to like $150,000 purses like you were finishing 30th you were making like three four grand on top of a thousand dollar entry fee so it was like a really good payout for, you know, mini tour, mini tour life. Wow. And he did pay out like the first year or first they, couple events or something. Yeah. First events, guys were getting checks on, you know, that like that next week they were getting a check. And then eventually it went to a class action and it got a couple of the bigger guys who made, I mean, there were people who were owed like 30, $40,000 and they got paid. Um, but you know, the lower, the lower guys didn't really, they kind of forgot about that. But at the end of the day, it was, it was a fun experience. I bet. I bet. I wanted to ask you too about uh caddying. Cause it seems like you've trickled that in a little bit. Like, yeah. Has that ever, like, have you ever desired to be next to someone walking up 18, like on a Sunday in a big time event? Is that, could you see yourself uh, doing that or? Not, not anymore. Um, but I was, when I was in college, I caddied at a place to Chessie Creek, uh, for a bunch of years, but I was at Belfair, Berkeley hall. Um, and then when I moved out West, I caddied at Pelican Hill in Newport beach. And that was the time where, you know, I was, I was not playing that great. And, you know, I was friends with a lot of guys who were playing and that conversation came up, uh, because of, yeah, I'd love that at that time, it would have been an absolute blast. Uh, playing or caddying you're just as part of it you yeah. know the, the player the player gets all the glory but still it would have been it would have been fun to to hit your bag for for a couple of weeks and and just to just to see what it's like inside the ropes and you feel like you you have a, a stake or you feel like you own some of that win or or loss depending right exactly definitely I've I've always like I've been I was a teacher's aide like five years ago at a local high school thinking about becoming a teacher and I'm in like free period Google and like, how do you become a caddy? (laughs) That would be fun as hell. Really. It's a really fun life. You know, the people, the people that you meet are, are absolute characters. You know, that um, when I was out in Newport beach, we, we caddied for a, it was a caddy master, caddy master Inc. So it was like professional caddies. You had to go through, you to go through tests to get qualified, but these are the guys who are at Bandon in the off season. Um, those are the guys caddying at Pebble. So it's like all the huge resorts so that, you know, you guys caddying at Pelican Hill and Newport beach for a few months and then go to Bandon and caddy. It's like, yeah, that's, that sounds like a decent way to live. <laughs> yeah. Just get in the van going, going to one place at a time. <laughs> that'd be, that'd be yeah. unreal. Oh man. Yeah, no, I, I, I feel like, especially for that too, like having your amateur, having your amateur experience, having your pro experience too. Like I, from my understanding, there's a lot of guys who like try and do it for a call if, and if they, you know, either don't do well or, or they just decide against it, they, they all hop on bags and, and just, and just go for it and try and be, try and be a looper for some guys. I mean, shit, uh, ca- uh, Ricky's caddy for, you know, for a while until they just split up. But I mean, that dude would play in U.S. Open local qualifiers and USAM qualifiers. And Zach Johnson's caddy freaking qualified for the U.S. Senior Open a bunch. Like those guys are absolute just sticks. They just, you know, might not be able to hit that one percent shot that's needed. Mm. I w- I mean, I w- I wish I could hit like 
70 percent of the shots that are needed so so i totally understand from that side so definitely want to kind of go back into to your club building uh area yeah. so i know you got like you said you got started down at down in beaufort you got started down there built building up clubs what is um you know what what are some of the most because i know you guys do uh, you know custom built clubs you're also kind of doing the Almost like, you know, when you see like the car renovations, like when they do like the old classic car renovations, I've seen you guys do a couple, you know, I, I've seen those, I've seen those um, Wilson blades that you guys spiff up and oh, make yeah. them look like they're brand new. Yeah, um, not of your, not of your, not of your listeners get any ideas. <laughs> I might have to bring, uh, bring you my putter just to like that thing's got a little, uh, could use a little, you know, black on the back. It's, it's spotted. It, it's old, but. Yeah, it needs little, to be a uh, TLC. Needs to Mike plays yeah. just clean it up a little bit. Mike plays a Spalding putter. Dude, I oh, love hell it. yeah. Uh, it's that a, maybe yeah, from the 80s. Maybe from the 80s. Spalding. Most likely the 70s. Oh, so like an, ori an original TP Mills. That's TP it, Mills Yeah. And uh, I always thought that, like, because I'm a basketball guy, I always thought that Spalding and basketball was S P A U L D. It's not. I think it's the same company who made the the, putter, the club, golf clubs and the and the and the balls yeah they make balls i didn't i never i never knew they were in golf putting i i could be mistaken but i i think it's the same company and it just it fits i like that yeah you just got to stay true to who you are yeah i mean that's like uh like dunlap back in the day like they were a huge tennis company and then they tried to make golf balls and it like worked for a bit and like all those you know there's there's a ton of companies that I mean, probably the most famous one is Nike, who had nothing to do in the golf industry and then signed Tiger Woods. <laughs> and then, yeah, then they became, then they became huge and, and they made, decided not to get involved in golf anymore. And they made great irons and absolutely horrendous boards. <laughs> yeah, they, they made that one like navy blue one. The, it was like 360 it was the smaller one that tiger first played that was really nice and then they went down the sasquatch train and boy they, we just re we just reshafted speaking of club building we just reshafted a uh, guy brought in a sasquatch that he bought off of ebay because they were his favorite driver and uh yeah we had to drill out the the neck because there's a broken shaft in it and um and, and put a nice new shaft in it guy was very very happy I was very sad because those drivers sound absolutely horrendous, but you know, what are you going to do? Wow. They're literally, it's, it's like, it's like hearing almost like a gunshot. I feel like it's like, <laughs> it's just like, boom. like, okay. That was, it, yeah. That was in like the time of the Cobra S nine that you could hear across the entire golf course. And you know, now they're, now they're going back to carbon and trying to deaden the sound and go back to persimmon to make it not sound so, so terrible. It's uh, it's funny because I I um I draw I use a I hit a uh, ping four twenty five max driver and it's similar similar noise where I remember I'll, I'll never forget it first time on the range using it and like I hit it it sounds like a little league bat just like tunk and people are turning heads and I, and I always say I was turning heads but like not for the right reasons like it was <laughs> people, people weren't looking at me like being like wow look at that guy hit it it's that is like, explosive yeah right they're just like dude get this guy off the range you are so loud and disrupting us <laughs> you are totally doing it so um so yeah that's the, the ping 425 max the new sumo uh, in my eyes <laughs> i haven't heard that yet i like it <laughs> jonathan i got i gotta ask i mean spargo golf like club fitting we talked about it a little bit brenda made fun of me because i spent out my ass at club champion a couple of weeks back i did get a ping uh rescue 425 uh G whatever Fantastic it is, G -port. Clubs. They, he they put that in my hands and I was um, in love. Like cheat code, I thought. I thought to myself, yeah, those in the uh, the fairway woods that ping made the G four twenty five that that max head is an absolute cheat code for so many players. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Um, so tell me, like what, like what, I, what are we gonna get? Like I should have came to you, obviously. Like I want to know. God. You next know. time we'll we'll set up just a a, a a retrofit so we'll go through and make sure that the boys at club champion treated you right yeah love that what uh like what do you what do you do what's your 
style or like what do you got going on in there I'd, I'd love to know more yeah for sure um so we have at the range we've got the flight scope x3 so that's the monitor we use um we're hitting on the full range we've got ping tailor-made cobra titleist um, Mizuno and Adele um, with their wedges and irons. So we don't have, you know, the two big ones we don't have is uh, Callaway and um, Strixon, but we're, we're in the process of bringing Strixon in. Uh, but really what we're trying to do when, when players come in is, you know, first off, try to find what your goals are as a player. Uh, it's, you know, for example, we'll just go full bag fitting. Um, so you're going to spend three hours in the studio with me. Um, we're going to go through top to bottom driver, fairway wood, hybrids, irons, wedges, and talk through what a player needs. Um, you know, I've got, I range from a few of my buddies, mini tour players that come in, um, that are in town. And then I range most of my, my fittings are, you know, 15, 16 handicaps and higher. Um, so those, those players were just making sure that their bag's not overloaded with use, useless stuff. Um, a lot of three woods don't get played. A lot of four woods or five woods. Um, just trying to figure out what players' zones they need. Um, in the, basically from fairway wood down, we're trying to find zones of the, of the golf course that are most, most prominent for the player that's in the studio. So if you hit, for example, if you hit driver 200 yards, you're not going to have 14 clubs to fill up from 200 yards to yourself there just isn't enough carry distance to have that so let's separate by maybe 20 or 25 yards and have you know a, a really reliable fairway wood a really reliable neck shot and then pay attention and say seven eight nine wedge be really really tight because you're going to score with those clubs um and and with the driver well you know uh Nah, 10 out of 10 fittings are only wanting to hit it further. They don't give a shit how many fairways they hit. It's just make me hit it 20 yards further. So in that regard, we're trying to make the club ball move as fast as humanly possible. But, you know, if you swing it 70 miles an hour, I can try to get it to move, you know, 110 miles an hour off the club face if you make a perfect golf swing. Um, and then there's that level of the fitting where most of it um, is talk you know, a lot of it's talking through golf course management and um, maybe swing flaws, but not making it a lesson. Um, just having the player understand where their misses are, um, why their misses miss the way they do. You know, if you've got a pull hook explaining why that ball does that. So they make you maybe, even if they don't buy clubs, they can leave just a little more educated about their own game. Um, and then, you know, luckily, if we do it right, uh, we'll get, um, a bunch of clubs on a work order for the player, you know, we'll you know, say it's a, a driver, a fairway wood, uh, you know, uh, maybe a couple hybrids, a few irons, a wedge, and then they'll spend an hour with my putter fitter, Steve Coletta, who's been with the shop 13 years. I can't believe it's been like 30 minutes since the first time I mentioned him. Um, he's the, he, he's the one who basically keeps the shop alive while I'm in fitness all day. Um, so he does the putter side of it where, we're going through the same exact kind of script uh, that's that Tommy Tommy taught us. Um, we're we're making sure that your equipment is right for you, and if we can find something drastically better, it's going to scream at us, and we're, we'll be able to see the difference. If not, what you have is good. Just stop worrying about your damn equipment and go maybe work on your golf swing or maybe work you know go practice more or play more. Um, but it, it's you know it's a four hour very fun experience um, where that you're able to try a lot of different of the bigger brands. Um, so then, you know, say we, we find a Titleist driver that you smash, uh, a ping fairway wood, a ping hybrid that you love, and then maybe um, the new Mizuno, uh, you know, 223s are, are just dialed in perfect because the shaft selections are really good. Um, and then we find you a few Adele wedges because that technology is awesome. So you'll have you know, four or five brands in your bag. Um, I don't really care to have one brand throughout because nobody's, nobody's going to be able to hit every club in, in one company's catalog the same, like really well. It just is very rare. That's yeah. Great. And none of us are paid to play these brands, by the way. And, and no, See, that's specs. the biggest one. Nobody, nobody sponsored. So <laughs> why show them loyalty if they're not going to really show you too much loyalty? Yeah, that's my biggest thing with it because I've been I've been very pro team mixed bag because I went in for my fitting. I got new clubs about two years ago now, and I was going in and I'm like, I am team tailor made. Like I'm getting tailor maids. I am I 
I only want TaylorMades. And I go in and I hit the TaylorMades the absolute worst out of the four clubs that I hit. I hit the Mizunos better. I hit the tight. I hit the Titleist better, and I hit the Callaways so much better. So I was like, "All right, we're going Cal. Like we're going with the Callaways. This was great." So yeah. I, I just think like I, I think the way you guys approach it is is absolutely right. Where it's like, don't worry about the brands, don't worry about this, don't worry about that. Just play the game that you know. Let's get exactly what you need to make your game the best. I appreciate that. Yeah, it's you know I I try to use the example of. You know, not everybody, if you look at it like baseball, not everybody is the, the leadoff hitter is not meant to hit home runs. He's meant to get on base. Um, you don't know, tell him that Jesus, if they <laughs> don't do their job, they're not really, they're, they're in a lot of trouble where with golfers, we're in this time period um, and kind of going from college to now we're, we're at, like when I was in college and it was playing then we're in a time where everybody thinks that just because they have the newest equipment, they should hit it just like the best players in the world. Or it has as far as the best players in the world. And that's the biggest issue that I have with, with all these manufacturers is um, they're de lofting irons to lie about ball speeds. They're, they're promising like, five miles an hour of ball speed off of drivers when drivers have been maxed out for 17 plus years. Um, you know, they haven't gotten bigger. They can't. Uh, so it's, it's forgiveness that they're trying to get. And, I, and that's just the one thing that I do have a problem with is, you know, if players just played more of the game, their, their own game, then, you know, I think they'd have a lot more fun rather than I just need to hit it 20 yards for, and, and all of a sudden my scores will get, will get better. Are there any club clubs um, that you would want to have like in, in the fitting room? So like smaller brands, like either like, uh, you know, like a Grindworks, Tacomo, anything like that, that you would kind of, you know, maybe if they got a little bit, like if you, if you got either a sweet deal or if like, you know, you, you were able to kind of look at them and like hit them, would you, would you rather kind of put people towards that? Like want some of the smaller brands instead of, you know, just, Taylor made and Titleist and Mizuno and all those guys. I uh, yeah, the, the purest in me, yes. Um, the realist, realist in me, no, because you know, mar brand marketing is what makes makes the world go round. Um, and you know, we've we've always we've always had uh, at least one kind of off brand name. And our biggest thing is if we have to promote your brand as well as fit you, um, it just makes the it sounds like we're selling the club. You know, we had Vega in, um, and great company, great irons, Japanese forged irons. And, you know, they're, they're like 250 ahead, plus a shaft, plus a grip, plus a build. You're looking at $350 like iron versus that, you know, Titleist MB. It's like, yeah, is that MB really that much worse than that, that Japanese forged? And on the, you know, consumer, that's your own, you know, whatever you want. But um, we always found it to be quite difficult. Um, the one, the one company I've been, we've, we built a few of their prototypes. Um, and then he's, he's worked with a, a company, um, out of New Jersey to, uh, customize the clubs a bit more with a little company out of Canada, Geo. They make that, uh, short set, kind of an unmarked short set where it's 21, 28, 37 and 45, um, are the head locks. So it promotes that kind of eight degree gap minimalist, um, you know, minimalist, uh, mentality, um, which we, we do promote quite a bit. Well, I, I needed this podcast like three months ago, but it's all good. It's all good. Um, I was going to ask, so I'm on the golf course a decent amount and I hear people talk about like hitting off a mat and, and I'm in my backyard and I'm like, I want to build like a real green, like, and then people are like, you can just have a company come in and put like, you know, nice turf down, like, like, how do you sell someone to like go spend a lot of money on a club fitting like inside off of a turf as a, and, and as like you're a purist, like a golfer, like you probably love hitting off grass more than anything. Like how, I, how do you, I do. How do you answer that? Like, like someone's like, ah, club fitting off a, of, off a of mat is, is tough, but I, 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 I enjoyed it. I, I liked it. I really didn't, I was optimistic going and didn't really have a, I was open to it. Obviously I paid a bunch of money to do it. Right. Yeah. Um, 
but how do you yeah how do you go about that i guess one of the one of the big that's one of the uh i would say one of the main main things that i hear is the mats and and not you know not being really true to to grass um the the nice thing is we have full flight on the range so you always get to see your ball flight um but with the mat um the one we use is I do say, you know, it's, it's like a $1,500 mat um, that's supposed to replicate a, a divot um, in the sense that, you know, we've, we hear enough where we know when you chunked it, we know when you thinned it. Um, that's where the sound is really good for the mat. You know, you can pick up on a player's soul, a soul interaction just by, just by sound. Now that isn't really the most convincing thing. If some guy comes in, guy or girl comes in just never been fitted before and be like ah oh, no man I, I'm, I'm good with it I can just hear your I can hear your soul interaction we're going to fit you just fine um usually the players that struggle off the mat we use uh you know we use a little short t um just replicate par threes um and then you know going forward if they do buy the clubs um one of our big selling points for players is that we live with you there's we don't give 90 day returns because we live with our fit um, we're, we're always here. If you kind of hitting the clubs like shit, we're here to help, um, whatever needs to be done. Um, and, and usually we don't have that many, you know, that we don't have that big of big of problems ever. Um, but yeah, the, to ease the concern, it's, if we can hit off of the, the T that that usually helps. Um, and, and sometimes, uh, players do struggle throughout the whole fitting and, you know, we can't find a big difference between their club and any of the new clubs. So um, I just don't really offer them, you know, I don't try to sell them on that club. I just say, you know, your, your club's fine. Maybe we work on the impact, maybe work on some certain things. And then we, we circle back in, in a month. Um, you come back for an hour, we, we book out a spot, you come back and, and we get it done, you know, try it again for a second time. And if it doesn't work and try it a third time, but um, it's happened a few times where players just, can't hit off the mats um it, it was you know i felt bad but we we worked it out you know we that me and me and a few of those customers we worked it out on uh in a way but um it was yeah it was it was a tough fit because you know they're, they're having a miserable time um no matter what i say and you know, I, I just want a player to have fun i'm comforted as a listener just because you're also like a really good golfer and you you add that layer of like your expertise or your thoughts on their swing. Like, like that's huge too. Like if you're going into a fitting, you just want to hear, you know, a couple of things to, to help you. That was always what Tom, you know, Tom kind of led me into was uh, being able to relate to a player uh, as, as a player um, rather than just someone who knows the numbers. Um, it was, it was cool. Sometimes I'd go into the fittings at the studio after Tom was done and, some of the fits he didn't even turn the monitor on and he sold a full bag of clubs the player was so happy couldn't speak highly and i was just like the the dude didn't use a single thing on the monitor so it's one of those things like our you know a lot of our a lot of our players that i see now as as golf gets younger um i see a ton of paralysis by analysis where you know trying to get that perfect launch number and that that home run derby driver where you'll hit it like three times that way in an entire round because you've had seven beers and you know, it's cold out and your, your body doesn't feel good. And you've built this club to just be completely swinging like an animal and it just doesn't work. Um, we see it a lot. Everybody, you know, everybody's always interested in the numbers. Um, if we can get ball flight that looks the same, usually players are completely sold. Yeah. I definitely wanted to ask you about, because we see it so much, right? Like, I mean, Cameron Young is like the new, he's unbelievable, but he's every, everyone is thinking about Cameron Young now because he can hit the ball on average 340 yards. And I know you talked about it a little bit beforehand, but do you think like with that side of golf where it's kind of becoming more of the Bryson like bomb and gouge instead of like, you know, you have the Kevin Kisner's, the course managers, the web. Sim- I always put Webb Simpson. That's like my guy who I'm like, he's the course management guy. Cause he hits the ball like 290 and then has to like, you know, do a couple things here and there, but yeah, he'll when- shake, he'll shake like one shot around a tournament, but he won't miss the center of the club face for the rest of the week. Like exactly. it's absolutely ridiculous. 
Exactly. So where, where do you think golf can go to kind of get that happy medium in between the bombing gouge and then like the guys where it's more like the Kisners and the Spees and the, you know, and, and the Simpsons where they don't hit it as far, but they have great course management. Ooh, uh, <laughs> companies stop, you know, companies stop pushing speed is the only thing that matters is that would be the first one. But I, you know, look as a, as a player who still competes in state opens. Um, yeah. In the off season, you bet your ass I'm trying to pick up club head speed because at the professional level at high, high amateur um, professional golf level, if you don't hit it far, <laughs> go find something else to do. Like it's just going to be a very difficult game um, until they roll back equipment. It's the only way I, the, the amount of kids I see coming in like 17, 18 years old that hit it. Like, I'm not kidding. They're breaking the 120 club head speed just routinely. It's just like, yeah, this is a different, it's, that's completely different golf. They're, they're carrying at 320 plus yards in the air every time. And it's not a big deal. Um, now, if you have that at like 15, 16, 17 years old, yeah, it's pretty easy to dial in a wedge when you're 25 and a little bit more mature. Um, but like, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of on the, you know, with all the, the, the two tours going on, uh, the equipment talk has been dialed back a lot, unfortunately, uh, cause I was pretty excited what was going on there, uh, being that they might be like bifurcation and have, you know, the uh, high-end amateur to professional ranks be playing their own side of equipment and then actual innovation could happen on the amateur side of golf in the recreational side because it's really stupid that the recreational side uh, builds golf clubs for the that their their customer is not actually the the 99.9 percent of golfers they build clubs to conform within the professional golf ranks and then they build it for players who just want the game to be a little bit easier. So if you separate that now, TaylorMade can make a driver that is completely trampoline effect, you know, face. And, and a player who does swing at 80 miles an hour can pick up a bit, a few more yards. Because, yeah, at the end of the day, hitting it further is more fun when you're in the fairway. Um, but it's what are we sacrificing? Where I see it, what I see in the studio is – player not understanding where that speed comes from like where that speed from cam young comes from it's 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 physical ability it's strength training it's technique it's mechanics it's thousands it's the ten thousand hours it's it's all of that and then yeah it also helps that he's what like six two and built like a brick shit house like <laughs> you know it, it's like, it's like people say, I want to swing it like DJ. It's like, cool, be six foot four, lean and have like extension through the roof. And you can yeah. swing like DJ all day long, but you're five, five. So good luck. I show dude, him. I'm telling you when Wilco Ninabar ends up making the PGA tour, dude, he's six foot eight. He bombs the ball. It's going to be right. the same exact thing. It was awesome when he was getting some uh, some publicity when Bryson was like bulking up and this kid's just like yeah I, it, it just looked like three quarters was like yeah. 130 mile an hour I was like yeah Bryson you don't actually hit that far <laughs> people hit it so much further than you I mean Tony Finau is a great example of that too he has to take him and John Rahm have to take three quarter swings because Finau says he can't control it if he does a full swing and well John Rahm has a has a foot foot problem so that's why he's got to do it too yes yeah, so this cl his club foot that makes him that amazing golfer that he is yeah it's crazy it's absolutely crazy on that side so oh. funny story about about fee now is he was on that national pro golf tour that i was on in my first year so the guy that i traveled with was really really good and i missed a lot of cuts so i got to watch a lot of the final rounds of you know my buddy playing and and tony was you know basically winning everybody's money um, during that and he was that was like my first introduction to seeing what what true distance was because I had just played that hole and then you know two hours later I'm watching him hit it 90 yards past the spot that I hit it it's just like what I yeah I don't I don't know I don't I don't care how many push-ups I do that that ball's not getting there <laughs> that's kind of like a Mike with literally anybody else on the golf course <laughs> <laughs> he, he is go, is 90 yards behind his club fitting added yardage to him 
So uh, that's what we like to hear. <laughs> Getting that solid, solid contact is a wonderful thing. I, I, I totally kid, Mike, but it's like uh, he was using clubs that were old when he got them. So like it was, it's just, that's something. It that had to have been most, night and day. We, we played at Swansea on a couple of Fridays ago in a, in a scramble. So we're loose. We're swinging free. I, I, I didn't get it all, I guess, but I got it. I got it good. Like I drove it well. And then Brian stepped up and <laughs> knocked it and, and it, we were on the same line. So like I, I got out of the cart and started walking from my ball to his and it was 30 yards. It was hilarious. Uh, it was, it was honestly hilarious. Like Mike it's, literally, it's I, jarring. I put mine into the woods. Mike gets up and we're pumped because we have like one in the, you know, we have one in the fairway. So like, I was good. good to, to, yeah. I and Brian gets up, Bry guy gets up and just locks it. And if like on this, just dead straight too, like literally no curving in, no curving out, just right off the face. Yep. You know, it's buttoned. He lands it 10 yards ahead of Mike and then it runs an extra 20 yards. Yeah. It was nuts. It's, but it's yeah. like, it, it doesn't matter if you hit it far. It just means that like, for me, it goes farther into the woods. If I, if I don't hit it perfectly. It's, <laughs> that's the thing. Yeah. I was always the short hitter. Um, you know, I'm, I'm a small guy, so I was never a big hitter. And when, when I turned, when I got into college, it was the same thing. It was like, ah, screw it. I'm just going to hit 14 fairways. And, and then when I got to the tour, you know, playing professionally and seeing that, that mentality, when you see a guy fly it like a hundred by you, it's just like, oh yeah, that that's just not going to work. You gotta, you gotta do something to change. Exactly. The last true successful tour player who was a short hitter is Brad Faxon, another Rhode Island Nate. Another. Hey, there you go. You know, yeah. Rhode Island. Yeah. Is, so, they, yeah Fax, him and Fax Billy Andrade. Him and little, Billy Andrade. Both, love, both a little shorter, but, but right. you know, they crushed it. Uh, love hate with Brad Faxon these days with the whole Metacomet thing and all that. It's a, it's truly a, sad, I mean, it's a sad thing. You're moving, you're moving a butthole, buttonhole. So. I heard, I heard, I heard rumors that they're keeping the the front nine together and rerouting maybe two holes. So we might get a, we might get a good nine hole course, which would be, and, and, which and would be is that what you're talking about? Yeah. I've heard, I've heard. Well, so I, I was telling these guys, I think um, I received an email uh, from Triggs uh, the other day saying save Triggs golf course because of the, the mayoral candidate is unreal it's unreal so wants to wants to build Providence, go, a... vote for brett smiley i guess you gotta vote for yeah, brett yeah <laughs> it's gonna be it once to, once we move over to buttonhole i'll have to get involved in the uh, the local town politics to keep <laughs> to keep triggs alive i mean it's it's just crazy both donald ross courses like it's just like you can't just keep like ruining ruining history and right I have a tough time believing that guy's going to be able to get that passed. I mean, they, they do like 50,000 rounds a year. They're, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's right. one of the most pop, it's one of the most popular golf courses they in cramp. the city. And it's the it's, only city. It's funny and it's, in, it's in good shape. It's in like it's, shape. In, it's awesome. I love For the a public land. course. It's in incredible shape. I'm like, playing there Saturday in a scramble actually. Wow. Um, and, and I was, and when I read that email, I was like, this might be the last time I, I get to play tricks. I'm, like, <laughs> I'm going to read like, my emails. Like, no, not tricks. <laughs> 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 but, but yeah, no, um, it's, it's too great. I mean, that's just the, that's, that's kind of uh, a sad reality of, of, I mean, even Atlantic golf uh, is like shutting down. The yeah, driving dude, they've said that for the past 10 years. I know. It, right. I keep hearing condos, but every time I go up there to get Miller's, there's people are swinging still ball. going. Miller's yeah, Rose Peace. Unreal. Yeah. Oh, so that, that golf shop Sh- right there. Shameless plugs. I love yeah, it. That love golf Miller's shop was Rose the Peace. best where Fantastic. Miller's was. Because like that, yeah, that little par three course in the back. Oh, Shadow Shadowbrook. Yeah. Shadowbrook my that, was go- that, that course was gorgeous. Well, well, good shape, but so short. It was oh, 60, yeah, 60, yeah, 60, degree degree. 60 yard part three, 60 yard part three to start off. Oh, it was immaculate, all you though. needs two clubs. It was immaculate. They kept that place. Jonathan, I don't know if you know Chamao, but I was over there this morning with my dad. And when you were talking about like how they can, if, you know, there was a separation from pro and, and amateur golf, like in terms of club making, just build clubs for like my dad who struggling to get around Chamao today. I felt bad for the guy, you know, he's just couldn't hit it anywhere and uh yeah and it's it's for like guys like that who still love to play golf it kind of becomes not really that fun to not, not be able to reach a fairway to not be able to reach a par three in one like yeah, yeah I, I get that but you know 
where they're using they're buying i see those poor guys buying drivers every year and it's just like him and your club head speed's getting slower do you, <laughs> right do you, right if you drive your car slow do you buy a new one to go faster if you can't <laughs> run fast do you buy new sneakers to run faster it's like no you've got to do the work and at some point you know our body's going to say or yeah, that work's done you know you're this is who you are for the rest of your golf career but yeah it'd be fun to see um you know like crank crank drivers are are um a lot of club builders um uh I'm a part of this association of club builders. And a lot of those guys are using that, that, that driver head because it's illegal. It's, there's no, you know, it's a, it's past the conforming limit, but a lot of the slower swing speeds, they do get a little bit of pop off. Of it. You need, need one of those, uh, those no swing drivers that has like the, uh, gun, the, the gun on it. Yeah. That's, that's all I need to sell. Just keep one of those in the back. And if they really can't have, it, it's like, I got one for you. <laughs> Exactly. That'd be unreal. That'd be so funny. <laughs> I want to get your opinion on some of the uh like not really newer because obviously like Mira has been around forever, but they're kind of coming into more of I don't even know if I would say the retail, but like the ultra high end retail where they're like no longer just making the clubs that Tiger wants and the clubs that like all the pros are going for and then just putting Taylor made on it or putting Nike on it or putting whatever on it. They're actually like going out and selling mirrors now. And then the Excexios are coming in for like the older generation where, you know, they're charging $900 a driver for Christ's sakes. Like I, I kind of want to get a customer base. That's like 70 years old and higher. It's real, real scummy business plan. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And they got Ernie Els out there too. Who's an awesome guy. Who's like one of the, literally the nicest guys I've ever yeah. met from like a tour. Never going to not root for him. Exactly. But I, I definitely wanted to get your opinion on like, because I know we talked a little bit about the the smaller uh, groups and definitely want to get your opinion on kind of like those newer, I wouldn't say newer, but like kind of now the ultra high end luxury clubs that they're putting out that are like exactly what you said, like 350, 400 bucks, a, an iron, 800 bucks, a driver, you know, probably crazy wedge price too. definitely want to get your opinion on like, is that even worth it at that point? Um, there's a certain, there. I'm sure that there's players who feel like it is worth it. Um, you know, I guess I, eyes in the beholder and in, in terms of the high end stuff. Um, but like we used to have mirror in the shop when I first started working there, we, you know, uh, Tom, Tom basically got me, got me working like on stipends because I got fit when I was on the road. Um, I came in, got fit by him. He built me up clubs. I asked him to reshaft a set of atoms that I had. And he reshafted them with uh, Mira MBO ones on them. And he's like, yeah, whenever you're home, you can just work for me and, and pay them off. So I, uh, that was, you know, my introduction to a Mira blade. Um, fantastic club. They're, you know, they're really, really clean looking. Uh, there's, there's real good, bl there's bl good blades out there everywhere. Um, but people, again, going back to the, the marketing, people just want to recognize brand. That is it um you know mira making they're making a great business decision going into uh direct to consumer um so you can i mean you could go get fit by me and then just take all of the specs that i give you and go on their website and order the book and you'll have it built by you know master builders in in japan at, at mira's factory it's like yeah that's that's kind of cool um but uh in terms of like the super super high-end almost gimmicky stuff like hanma um, when that stuff came out at really high end price, um, you know, at the end of the day, it's who's swinging the golf club. Um, Mizuno's got enough, you know, Mizuno's got enough, uh, enough major wins in the last 10 years that nobody knows about, you know, Kepka was playing the nine one nine tour for all of those wins and nobody knew because he didn't get paid for it. Um, you know, Ty, just like you mentioned, Ty, the, the old mystery of tiger forging, you know, mirror of forging tigers clubs. Um, uh, there, there's a lot of guys, uh, in Mizuno. I've heard rumors that the guys and girls who forge at Mizuno on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, or Monday, Wednesday, Friday, forge at Mira Tuesday and Thursday. Um, so it's like, you're getting, you're getting the same level of master craftsmanship when you're going to that. Um, I guess it would be like the same equivalent of, uh, if you're, if you're into surfing or if you're into like a sport like that, like, yeah, you could get three-year-old product if you're going to surf, you know, five times a year. 
but some play some surfers want to get that handcrafted board that's just fit perfectly for them um and that's kind of that high-end stuff is some players just they love it they they want that national custom is really national custom is um, one of the really high ends that we build a lot of their clubs uh patrick's a great dude um and he has sent uh, a lot of the players who ask him to build their clubs he sends them up to us uh, through the relationships fargo had with him back in the day with scratch and then the the relationship that i formed with them over the years um, and those clubs are, are so good to build with, um, you know, you get them, you go through a, a fitting consultation with them on, uh, on, online. Um, and you're saying, I wanted that D one, or I wanted that, uh, you know, two, six, 82 MOI, and it's going to be at half an inch over at this shaft at this weight. Patrick knows enough of all those balance points of the shaft and know and Don white who grinds them knows exactly how to grind that wet head down to when you dry put that club together on the swing weight scale with the grip, that thing hits dead nuts number. It is so impressive. And now some of the other clubs from bigger OEMs, quality control is a little bit different, you know, a little bit off, but they're also making it, you're not waiting nine months to get a set of irons um, where if, like you go with a national custom, you are legitimately waiting nine to 10 months to get a set of irons, no matter if you order two irons or six of them, um, but it's the quality. Wow. No, I definitely get that on that side. I we uh we had a couple of uh kind of uh, friends of the program on, and and one of the things I I love to talk about is the cultishness of some of the big manufacturers. Like some of the big manufacturers have basically a cult like following. I want to know right now what do you think is the number one, and I want to see if we all have the same answer. I want to see if I have the same answer as you. But what do you think is kind of the number one? Cult, cult OEM company tailor made. Oh, that's different than I have. Who do you who do you have? I'm curious. I have PXG. I think PXG is a cult. Good call. Yeah. <laughs> Good call. The three that I the two that I was, PXG for some reason didn't even come to my mind. But I was thinking Callaway or Taylor made, but yeah, PXG is uh they are on a different level of um Hey man, he, you know, going back to nothing, he, he gets those commercials where the, the army generals yelling at you and, you know, <laughs> we're, we'll sell our, we'll sell last year's club for like 20 bucks, but the new one's like 600. Um, it's a, it's an overpriced ping in my opinion. Cause I, I originally thought ping and I know, and I know Brad guys got the, got the ping driver. So I always thought ping was a Colt. And then one of our, one of our guests, D Raz, who came on, he was just like, dude, you think Ping's a cult? Like, look at the PXG guys. And that, I'm like, yeah. You're right. They grabbed like, oh, the right. younger, they grabbed the younger generation of what would have been Ping Ping players. But yeah, Ping, Ping's very culty. Um, but I I wouldn't even think Ping because I think I, I love I love my Ping rep and like the company itself. I mean, shit, we you know, all fitters owe Carson Solheim, you know, quite a bit of thanks because he came up with really the the whole fitting program and and casting an iron and kind of made the made our business be able to kind of start in a way yeah now that what well, comes to mind immediately and it's it's only funny because i feel like it's uh, i'm a part of another cult is the, the scotty scotty cameron crew as well oh, i mean yep. that is specific and and i like i I love, I, I, I just got my Scotty last year and, um, it was always my dream putters Newport too, cause of tiger and, and just like everything, yeah. it's just the way it looks. And so I was like, okay, uh, I, I gotta do it. I gotta fix something up. And so I joined a Scotty Cameron Facebook group. And <laughs> boy, boy, is, was Hell that yeah. boy, was that oh. a mistake. It, it was like, I feel like it's just absolutely insane. The knowledge in there, it. but people are just like, oh my God, like, uh that's so fake like people like post like say is this a fake is this a fake one or like whatever and the amount of stuff that comes through it reminds me of like a uh, neighborhood facebook page where people are posting about the the neighbors blasting music and or what's that helicopter do flying so low like it's just like people need a, uh, people need a hobby that. outside if of you want to yeah if you want to go even deeper uh go t- go check out the tyson lamb you know group that there he's he's like the next age the new age scotty cameron where he's his putters are starting at like a 12 1300 you know start to make the putter it's all 
custom. He's got meetups, lamb jam. Like it's a it's a whole world out there, my man. It is non. It's crazy. It's it's a great time to be in the golf business because it you've got the old guard who are strictly the OEM players. You've got a ton of new golfers. You've got these crazy just boutique brand love all you know only do the boutique brands and they're spending a damn near ten thousand dollars on their set of clubs. The head cover, the the, the Scotty the Scotty Lamb off, the head, head cover covers. is two hundred dollars. I can get a new Odyssey and, for two hundred dollars. And there's a reason why mine is right here is because it's not <laughs> magnet. It's got a freaking Velcro. Uh, it's so that annoying. I'm like, I'm like, yeah, that's the best part. I spent four hundred dollars on a putter, and you give me a Velcro head cover. Velcro, it's gonna fall off. Right, exactly. So I put it immediately back there, and uh, it's actually on. I got, I found a uh, a ping answer too in my my parents' garage. Oh, there you go. So, like, I actually want to restore it. It's pretty pretty beat up, but I want to do some kind of restoring to it. I just don't. Yeah, P- ping does a great job. Um, like just getting it back to original. You know, they'll put a brand new shaft in it, put a new grip on it. They'll clean it up and like bead blast it. Um, mm-hmm. but there's but yeah, there's a bunch of companies that do all the custom stuff. It's yeah, it's I actually, wild. that's funny. I actually, it's wild. I, I, I design design Scotty's online for fun all the time. Like I did that. Oh, that's awesome. I did yes, that today. That, With, that, intera- that interactive website's amazing. It's cool. I know I was doing all different colors, paint fills and all that. But uh, that's a right. Yeah, I mean, that's it, what I was doing. You know, I was, I was going to do, I got notebooks full of those you know, putters that I was, I was going to make with Scotty. And, <laughs> still haven't made, still haven't made one yet. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. I, um, speaking of fittings, my, my buddy that I, I golf with shout out Colin, if he's listening, he, uh, did a put, putter fitting, um, last Friday and I texted him and I was like, Hey, how'd the fitting go? He goes, dude, I, almost walked out with three, three new putters. Like, he's like, I, I wanted, he's like my top three ranking ones. I, I wanted them all. Like, I just wanted to get That's it. So, I'm just going to buy a quiver of them and switch them out. <laughs> right, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> and, and it was interesting because uh, he ended up walking out with uh, a Peretti. I've never actually even heard of a Peretti. Oh yeah. Out of Texas. Putter. Yeah. Yeah. I had another, heard it. I just assumed it was another like one of those like Scotty, you know, Scotty Cameron, Bettinardi's those they're, mm-hmm. they're in that same high, um, really, really nice forging. I'm sorry. Really nice milling, um, mm-hmm. hand milled and all that stuff. Yeah. So that's, that's pretty cool. I mean, I just, I putters is the one thing that I like, I, I spent so much money on cause I was like, this can last me for my whole life. And, and they're just yeah. so fun. They're so fun to look at, <laughs> especially just like, in and, I, I would agree. And I mean, you're going to use the putter more than you're going to use the driver. Um, you're going to average Especially, 30 to yeah. 34 yeah. putts versus yeah. 14 drivers. But yeah, boy, people thing. swipe that card for a grand on the driver. All yeah, I don't, I don't hit three. I don't hit three drives every whole night, but I do three. Putts exactly. Yeah. Even if you get your three putts, you still get to use the putter. <laughs> oh. Yeah, it's too funny. But just, no, give me my just, just give me my $150 uh, or $200 Odyssey. I am, I am good on that. I lo- I don't know why I love Odysseys. Like I just, I got the old, like 20 the loyalist. 2009, 2009 Versa. Like it's the, Oh yeah. Versa. Yeah. I still got that. Those and I like, so uh, popular. I like half, like, I don't like the full mallet. Like I like kind of like the half, I think the half mallet gives you like a good balance. You know yeah, what I mean? It's gotten I the, I hate the blade. My old, my old uh, Monza Spider. Oh, oh wow! Or, or yeah, it's just absolutely. This was what I used to putt with, and I was like, I freaking stink. Those, this actually produced a lot of three putts. Whoa. But uh, <laughs> there we the go. Spalding. I love this. Yeah. Oh, this is the spalding. Where was this? Spalding. <laughs> yeah. How awesome is that? Oh, that thing is. And Mike. Neat. Mike's one of the best putters I've ever played with. So yes, that yeah. is actually yeah, a very true statement. Um, so that's how it always works. If it ain't broke, <laughs> yeah, that kind of looks like a fill. It's like a fill design, fill putter. We yeah, we always tell players it's not broken. Do not change because it might not get better. John, what do you think? Are you more blade guy, mallet guy, half mallet guy? Like what um, do you know? So <laughs> yeah, probably, yeah i've always been uh i've always been more of like that newport style um and gotcha. then got into uh then i started basically following any trend that 
uh, the best putters we're using. I was like, well, there must be something to that. So I'll try that one. But I've always liked that like mid, like kind of half mid slant, um, anything with a little bit of toe hang, but um, I've ventured now into, I've met him, met him a few years ago, uh, the Bomar family out of Idaho, side saddle putting. I have to, you know, we'll have to go play golf. I'll show you, I'll show you the, a new way to putt. Wait, is that like the, like what, yep. like, oh, oh yeah. my God. What? So Bryce, Bryce, it, Bryson tried it, but his was illegal because it was uh, 90 degrees fly angle and it was used as a two-sided club. Um, but yeah, when you, you get when you're done look up the bomar family billy and Brittany. they're uh they're on and chase they're an awesome family but they started a putter company three years ago because they're all they all putt side saddle um billy is one of the top putters in the world uh Brittany played australasian lpga and chase played d d2 college golf um but all just unreal putters uh so they started they designed a putter after all the ones that, that you know the ones that they play um, and I met him at the PGA show my first year down there. I was wandering around, saw them just dropping bombs on the putting tree. And I was like, I, we need to meet. Started <laughs> chatting. They were great people. And so I brought in a few of their, a uh, few of the putters and I've, I'm starting to, I'm getting more serious about it because I'm, I'm putting like absolute trash and I've tried pretty much every putter that I, that I have in a, in the studio. I was this just is, thinking that maybe maybe that's what I need to do is a side side saddle putt. I mean, can you you know can you play cornhole? That's the yeah. that's always can you oh, yeah if you oh, play yeah. uh, odd, you're long, preaching to the choir. Same, it's the same motion. It's we the play. same motion. Beer in hand, putter in hand. It's easy. Interesting. I don't know, man. It kind of looks like kissing your cousin almost. Like it might feel good, but there's something not quite right about it. Like, so yeah. now why I want to know, why is that? That's where golf, that's where the big change in golf. Yeah. If I told you you could have 20 putts around using that, would you? Brendan, that's the problem with golf these days. Yeah. You're, you're like the old school golfer where you're like, I don't want to see I get it. orange pants. I don't want to see anyone's side saddle. Wasn't, <laughs> Sam, <laughs> wasn't yeah. Sam Snead a freaking side saddle putter for a bit? Or what, what, like the yeah. old guys, some yes. of them were side saddles. Snead, Snead was the one because um, he did it croquet style and they outlawed it. Oh. Had a, uh, Bobby Jones Bobby Jones saw him do it croquet style and, and told, uh, told the head of the USGA to outlaw it. I love that, Bobby Jones. Bo- Bobby, Bobby, Jones. Jo- Bobby Jones has been the problem since the very beginning. <laughs> <laughs> and Brendan hot, Monroe. Hot take. <laughs> and, and me. And me and Bobby. And, I, hey, if I'm looped in with Bobby Jones on any type of golf thing, I, you're I doing win. something I win. right. <laughs> yeah, you're. You, yeah, you, get, you wear the <laughs> same over. pants. You, you wear the same knickerbockers as that Bobby. Real. Oh my yeah, God, me, great. me, Francis. We met Bobby Jones, Harry Varden, all wearing those <laughs> exactly. bad boys. We look sick. Oh, oh man! But that is that's real. That's crazy. That yeah, no, I saw them in there. They're really interesting because it's um, like uh, Brian. Remember when we talked with the Mully guys and they had that one Scotty that just looked crazy. Yeah, it was like, the, the, the Bomar team. ones. Yeah, do you, you guys keep. I'm team? gonna go. I'll go. Gra- I'll go grab this right next to me. What? Does he got it? Did he buy it? <laughs> he... Oh yeah. Like it's so. This it's is a, this oh is my a Beaumont. god! It looks worse than I thought. It's not. Oh my! God. That's gonna make me throw yeah. up. That's, Solid that's like metal. A door what, handle. What else? What else do you need? It's basically a door handle. Exactly. <laughs> Brian is officially out on the side. I just threw up <laughs> no, in my mouth out. looking at that. That was disgusting. <laughs> it's, it's all look. All look, city <laughs> <the> boys. <laughs> But, we've been but, we've like been programmed we we've been programmed oh, I like, know. like we say if it ain't broke don't fix it like it's just it do, we'll, do game, we'll question, game. i'll question how many how many three putts do do the does the group have collectively during a round of golf oh <laughs> hi yeah hi. So, more so three might not yeah it might it might more be threes than fun. one for sure <laughs> yeah for sure more threes than one explain how is that like cornhole explain that <laughs> so the, <laughs> I'm, lo- I'm lost <laughs> it's all Sweeping. in the setup yeah ba- it basically the way if you can kind of see my arm so you're basically locked in here and you're okay. moving it back and forth this way going straight back straight through so it's the same concept as a player using a full face balance putter Try- they're trying to go straight back straight through yeah but the way the the way the bomars make it is make the, the their argument is your body's kind of facing the wrong direction to do that 
because we're naturally going to be arcing around our body. Just all deep arguments for, you know, like one, one side's right, the other side's wrong. And, and then you can that, get into the argument about, about it anchoring and everything like that. And Oh, oh God. yeah. That makes yep. sense to me now. Thank you. I'm an idiot. I no, was, look, I was no, looking at that putter like I wanted to put it like I do now. Like, I'm like, how am I? That looks like I could do. You, <laughs> could you use it like you do now, like a regular putter? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, like if I, it, you know, if I'm not going up to like two feet, I'll just walk up and and just hit it normal. But it's not made. Or can, it's, can, it's made. It's not made for that. It's truly designed for for the the side saddle setup. Gotcha. It's the side saddle that I obviously was a little confused by that term. <laughs> most <laughs> most people are very when they see it they they think we've we've lost our minds. My buddies all think I've lost my mind when I bring it out. We, I mean, we like we we bring cornhole boards on the block island ferry like walk a mile up like the beach like we love cornhole and me and brian are cousins and we go to the beach we go to block yeah, so we when to, you mentioned kissing your cousin i was just picturing kissing mike come on down <laughs> <laughs> we go to bonnet shores beach club frequently and ha have for years and play a ton of cornhole it's it's in our blood you know it's 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 you know open open up our minds you never know Yes, I the evolution that. of going from spike balls a lot of work. So we we used to play spike yeah. ball. We're like, let's let's sit still and play sport. Let's, let's, stick to, let's stick to the premier drinking games, golf, <laughs> bowling, exactly, yeah. things let's, of that nature. Let's, let's slow it down. Slow it down a little bit. <laughs> I'm a huge There's a time and a place for all of that. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Dude. And that time has passed <laughs> uh, entirely. He snuck but, the bowling in there. Bowling's fucking tough, man. Like it looks yes. easy. I suck. It's fun when it's I'm bad it's fun. at bowling. Bad at bowling. I'm awful. My wife's very good. She whoops my ass in it. I am awful. Awful at bowling. It, it's kind of a level playing field. Like, like this, you know, it, it doesn't pay more pay to be stronger. Like it just pays to get the ball hitting that top pin at a certain spot. Like and getting lucky sometimes. Oh, yeah. A little bit of luck, but putting it over, it's like the mechanics are so there. It's moving. And if you do it right, if you can do it right over and over, but it's so hard to get you, the release I, at the same if you, spot. If you asked me to hit the top pin, if I threw like 100 balls at the top pin, like I think I'd hit five. Like honestly, yeah, I'd, be, I'd, and I'd be so pumped for I, all of them. I can never hit the top pin and it looks so easy. Oh. I wish I wish I was good at bowling, but I'm god awful. At it. I'm, really, I'm, I'm unreal at wee bowling. Wee bowling is my mm. thing. That's good. Yeah. I know it's different, but uh, candle it's, pin, it's, candle pin bowling. Oh, I hate it. I'm out on like, candle pin. Oh no, no you, dude, I'm you, out on you that. Can, you can throw it so hard. Uh, yeah, yeah I, I'm out on that. The balls, oh. or even the duck pin. I'm I out. do want to. I do want to get a quick plug in for all our loyal listeners. My wife. It, she's not a loyal listener but she's a big US, <laughs> she's a big tennis fan u.s opens on right now and if anyone's been watching some tennis matches lately it's fun stuff you know it's another individual sport kind of like golf like i just tennis is so wild like golf you have like time between shots to think like tennis it all happens so quick and it's it's just you out there and it's it's interesting it makes yeah. no sense how they can return a 142 mile an hour serve. I, I just don't understand it. <laughs> it's, it makes it makes no sense how Jordan Spieth can go out in in freaking swim trunks and no shirt and shoeless and hit a ball 310 yards and like straight. Like it, it's it's crazy how good the individual sport, like how good at those individual sports you have to be. But it's skill not, sports. But also real athletes, they pick up any other sport like like in a immediately. Second. Like they're immediately like even just like uh, Mookie Betts, obviously unreal baseball player, but also professional bowler. It's kind of just like Yeah, that's right. It's like he's a pro bowler. It's like F you Mookie, like what do you like yeah, pro, you, pro in two sports? Right? <laughs> just like insane. And and the, the coolest, nicest guy ever, too. It's that you can't even get mad like that he deserted us or we traded it. Just like, come on. <laughs> oh, I mean, step Steph Curry in, in the NBA offseason plays corn fairy tour events. Like yes, that yes, may be a different yes, conversation man. though, because he's taking away a spot from another player, but again, yeah. different yeah. conversation for a different day. But <laughs> he's that good 
where he can compete against the and not like, and not he doesn't make cuts, but he competes. Himself. Right? Yeah. yeah, he's not. He's, he's beating, not finishing he's dead beating, last by ten strokes. He's beating a lot of players who take that very seriously and consider themselves pro golfers. Exactly. <laughs> right. Crazy. Mookie, uh, Betts, Mookie Betts is a ten handicap too golfer. Oh God! Stop it! Just, 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 the, just the top icing on the cake. Icing on the cake. Right? I bet he's a good kisser too, or like he's good at sex. Like what, else, what else has he got? He's probably side got set. straight A's. Like what? What else has he got? Oh. Probably side saddle putts too. Yeah, right, yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely side saddle putts. <laughs> that's where we draw the line. That's, oh, that's where we draw the line. But but speaking no, of that, you were asking about um about the the three putts, but uh, a golfer pole, not a golfer pole, but a question that we always ask is. Do you have any hole in ones and, and how many hole in ones do you have? I do. I have seven. I assume that's why I, oh, that's why I had the follow up. <laughs> seven? Holy cow. That's why I had the follow up question because I assumed you had it. <laughs> at least one. Okay, we're not, we're not counting Mulligan's Island hole in ones, no. correct? <laughs> Zero at Mulligan's Island. That's the but part. Mini, putt, mini golf. <laughs> I have a hole in one at Mulligan's Island. <laughs> Holy cow. That's seven. right. Seven. Hey, that's like it's like we're just talking about guys sharing the wealth. Like share the wealth, you know. Seriously, <laughs> can, I, can I have one? Like can I have point, all in one? At that point, seven? Do you even remember them all? Like what? Like what the heck? It's so yes, I I absolutely do. Uh, <laughs> okay. okay, I was gonna be even more a, mad if you're like I forgot like exactly. No, oh <laughs> yeah. God, no, I, I remember them all very well. Oh that's my. unbelievable walk, walk oh us through God. your favorite one like the most meaningful yes one. yes like, the most meaningful oh. one for sure brian unbelievable on that yeah and then the talk most about your worst one and then yeah, tell the worst the one... one that you don't care about yeah. either yeah 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 both ends of the spectrum <laughs> you don't care about that's terrible no I don't there's care. not there you have seven holes in one i, I want to hear the worst one too <laughs> so <laughs> the most memorable has got to be my my first one it was in 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 the call it was in a college event, um, and then in mm. the same round, the kid I was playing with, uh, so I, I made a hole in one on, like, the uh, – I think it was, like, the third hole, and it was a shotgun start, and we got to the 17th hole, so we started on, like, six. Um, no, we started on 18. Yeah, we started on 18 or one. It was early. I made the hole in one, and we get to the 17th hole, and the kid in my group who had never made a hole in one – one hopped it in the hole and made a hole in one. So we went, the group witnessed two hole in ones in the same, in the same deck. It was absolutely unreal. You know, on your team wild. or the other team? The other team. Uh, it was on Savannah, uh, Savannah College of Art and Design, SCAD. And I'm sure you guys were still hugging each other. Like it was the, like the best. Oh, it was an <laughs> absolute party. The whole, the whole round. Cause we were all, we were all jacked up on mine. And then he made his and we just, the whole group went for That's just bananas. Amazing. That's so cool. That, oh, that's, the, that's the cool thing about golf too it's like obviously you're against each other but it's more you versus the course and like and so a moment like that is like the most the, the coolest thing where you're like power to you. you're not even mad like if, if even if he won like if he won by one stroke like if he walked off strokes, with an walked off with an ace it still is yeah, yeah you're like that was always good. what drew me to it it was you gotta play your best there's no there's no real there's no teeth right in. yeah you should have had two hole in ones if you wanted to beat him <laughs> yeah exactly i should have pulled out i should have pulled out on top of him that's, that's yeah. <laughs> okay so that is your best one that's an awesome story that's really cool um the i don't i don't have a worst one I, I don't even if there was a bad shot i've changed i've blanked that out and it's still a hole in one so it's not just, a bad shot yeah was there one that like <laughs> it, you absolutely no... duffed or yeah. scold and and you were like okay that's not even coming close and i ended up going in is there like, like a, the mark um, i don't know if you saw the the i think it was either the Wyndham or the rocket mortgage this year where it was mark hubbard where he full a decade like threw his club and it went in the hole yeah <laughs> i just yeah <laughs> um no, I've actually as you just pured it every time. This is that, yeah. This, that, <laughs> like I was so fortunate. I, all of the all of the ones I've seen him go in, none of not oh, one that I haven't seen like been di you know a disappear where a hole has been kind of tucked. Um, I'm trying to think. The worst one I, I've seen, I've seen like three caddying too. The worst one I've seen is the guy didn't celebrate. I was more excited for him than he was to make a hole in one. How do you not celebrate? How do you, you not know. celebrate? 
Well, if you made seven, I might I might walk up to her and just pick it up. Too. <laughs> oh, it never, never gets old. It never gets old. <laughs> oh man, oh, that's, that's unreal. Well, you have you are outscoring the, our whole podcast seven to nothing. Seven to <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, we're, we're down a touchdown. Once, we, once we, one we, comes, they come in bunches. Oh, yeah. you heard, you heard it here first. Clip that. <laughs> what do you get the first one? When it rains, it pours. I like it. Absolutely. I like that. So we do have a couple of other kind of like our, our last questions. So that's usually the first one we, we do. The second one is not golf related at all. Our, bu- our, our other co-host, Tim, randomly asked it out of nowhere to to one of our guests and now we ask it every single time would would you be okay i gotta frame it correctly would you be more offended if you were cake and got called pie or if you were pie and got called cake like so yeah would a pie be more offended if they were called cake like called a cake or would a cake be more offended if they were called a pie I think I'd be more offended if I was a cake called a pie. Correct answer, but yeah, why? There's, there's no correct answer. There's no because correct answer. Because a, yeah. a cake has so much more work into it. You just pour a bunch of sh- filling into oh. a breadcrumb and put it in the oven. He's going culinary on us. I, now. Knew <laughs> yeah. I was now, going strictly here's... off the vibes. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> oh, cake is a lot more fun. It would be very called a pie is, is rude. It's like being called uptight. I feel like yeah, it's just a two totally yeah, different yeah, it's vibes. Boring. You're boring. Yeah. You, you hang out. You hang out on the windowsill. You judge everybody. It, yeah, hit the windowsill. What a cartoon! Like a, every cartoon reference. That was like <laughs> yeah. the coolest thing. Just always a pie. Apple. That's unbelievable. Now, <laughs> what would you rather eat, cake or a pie? Uh, depends on depends on the day. All right, it depends on the time of day. There's a lot of cake and there's a lot of pies and yeah, that's a that's a that's a you um, you can either have your so favorite here, type of cake or your favorite type of pie. What are you going oh, for? Favorite type, favorite type of cake. Okay, interesting. I'm a, yeah, I'm a pie guy. I I love Fair a guy. I, I'm a big. What's warm, your favorite? Oh, apple pie. Warm apple pie. pie with ice cream on the side. It's over. It's over. I'll see. I'm already a big boy. I would be five thousand pounds. <laughs> just old. Brent, Brendan's the, uh, the the guy in the cartoon that is floating, sniffing the the pie in the window. <laughs> yeah. That's Brendan. He's levitating. Well, the pie watches and judges the me the entire the time. Exactly. <laughs> oh man. That's now, so now, do you go? Do you go into like the pumpkin and the rhubarb pies, or just strictly berry pies? Pumpkin's trash. Pumpkin pumpkin pie is trash. Oh, absolutely. Wow. Hot take. Oh, absolutely. Uh, I, 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 res- I respect that. I love <laughs> And then, that see, take. here's the issue is, too, is that I think, I truly think that, like, the median, the, it, the in-between between pie and cake is cheesecake. And I love that is. Cheesecake. That is, it's transitioning. Wow. It's in the transition. That's a, a nice, that's a yeah. nice blend right there. Who ever thought <laughs> a on a hybrid. golf podcast we'd be talking about pie? We get it. You did pie. this. You did this, Brendan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we. Oh man. No, I. What about like a Those pizza pie? Great. I love a good Those pizza pie. Pizza no. pie. Now we're. <laughs> mm. This. A, nope. Nope, nope, nope. That's where I draw the line. <laughs> it has to be dessert. Because if it, if a pizza pie is a pie, then I'm all in on pies. But <laughs> I uh, I'd have to go cake. Okay. Yeah, Mike. I, I know. I know you kind of go wobble back and forth on this one, but oh, I do I want cake. Your... I, I think I want cake. Mm. I yes. mean, I do like a good apple pie. I, I just feel like favorite going cake. Even store bought going cake. You know, I don't know. I think I'm just ice cream cake, Mikey. I feel like that's your your mo. I think, yeah. I think that's cheating. What is that considered? Uh, a cake? No, no, ice cream cake counts. It's ice like cream it's cake. like Brent, it's like Brendan getting his his vanilla ice cream on the side of his apple pie. Like he doesn't. Yeah, care. It counts. That's it big. counts. We're just, we're just pie versus cake. Pie v cake. You got to Yeah. Let let the yeah. Cake. You could you could argue the ice cream is what makes the pie good. Ice for cream you. is the greatest dessert <laughs> of all time. <laughs> <laughs> it is. 
Tonight. Welcome yeah. back to the Deserting Up podcast. And, then, yeah, and, then, and this is how the pod goes three hours. We talk about our favorite. <laughs> yeah, <stories>. right? As <laughs> if, oh. yeah. We didn't even ask this question. We didn't even ask this question to Ryan. Oh my God. If we would have, we would have had a five hour podcast with Ryan. It would have been great, <laughs> just with- but it would have been, it would have been a bad two- The only two parter in your history. <laughs> no, it, it's absolutely insane. And, and it's funny. Cause I was listening to the, the um, safe par bo- uh, podcast and they had a tacos at the turn on, on their, their pod. And, uh, the guy from Tacos at the Turn, I forget his name, I apologize, but he's, he said that a hot dog is closer in relation to a taco than is a sandwich. And I that blew my mind because it's so true. Because I know there's the debate, is a hot dog a wow. sandwich kind of thing? Sure but he's like, no, it's closer in relation to a taco. And then he totally. went on to say, like, if you have, like, especially a Rhode Islander here that puts the, the New York system hot wieners, you got to get all the way. That. Yeah, you gotta get it all the way. Get it all the way. way. <laughs> so we with the the meat on it, the onions, and like it's like okay, now yeah. we're like getting really. Now we're going into a meal. <laughs> going Bro, into yeah, a meal just... and a taco, full fledged taco. So. Oh my god! But all you need is salsa and lettuce on top, and that's that's a taco. Right. <laughs> I never like, thought of this before. I know it's it, it, it hurts my my brain a little bit. But we're gonna have I, we're gonna have to bring tacos at the turn on how, just to discuss. Yeah, it. I do yeah, want to bring him yeah, on in. You gotta, you gotta dive deep into this. He, he, I definitely want to bring him in because he, um, like it, just everything he talks about is like it's like a lifestyle brand, and it, it kind of goes into like I was joking about Brendan being an old guy in the golf world, saying like I don't like uh, all these flashy colors. Just tuck, yeah, your, yeah. tuck your shirt in and tee off. But uh, he his whole vibe is like creating an awesome clothing brand for golf um and and kind of like catering to to the people that that's their style and such but um he had a good point and like tacos at the turn was is the name of the clothing brand which is cool um but also i would absolutely love a taco at the turn more so than a hot dog uh, everybody yes. loves a good glizzy at the turn or, or a hot dog at the turn and I'm like, imagine there were tacos. That would be if there were tacos, fresh tacos. Yeah, I'm gonna go that That's, route all day why, long. Why is that? Why? Why is food? Why does food suck at golf courses? Why is that not something? I feel like that would make oh, the boy. experience ten thousand times better. Oh boy, we're wow. gonna have to cut this now, wow. or else we are gonna go through. <laughs> <laughs> oh. My wife's gonna kill me. <laughs> all right, <laughs> all right. I'll, I'll record my own pod i'll do my yeah, own like, just no, read read a we will have that pod. podcast what's we what's the deal with airplane food it just <laughs> I gotta do it like a jerry <laughs> oh man all right we promised last two questions because mike's wife is gonna kill you and john your wife is probably gonna kill you too anyways um you have you are on a deserted island you have unlimited balls what club are you taking you can hit them. You can hit them anywhere. You can you can play with your little putting green. You can you can hit hit chips all day. You can smack a drive into the into the water, and they're biodegradable. Eight iron. Eight iron. I like you it. You can hit. You can hit it full enough. You can chip with it. You know. You can belly it as a putter, but very versatile club. I can't belly. I can't Man. belly belly wedges or anything for shit. So I could. <laughs> Eight iron might be my least used club in the bag. Eight iron is one of my most used clubs because it's my 150 club. Oh, yeah, that's not me. Yeah, it's that. Uh, yeah, right I know you're like a pitching wedge from there, Brian. Yeah, sure. that's probably a big, <laughs> big dog. Big dog. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, and our last question, our last question, and it's, it's, I think it's my favorite question besides cake. Cake and pie is getting up there yeah, because know. now these, we're, these are pretty now good. We're going. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, we have 20 minute conversations about that now, but, um, Brendan, we can't actually skip the fact that you said you would bring your putter. You added the fact that yeah, yeah, we always have to bring that up. <laughs> Brendan would bring his putter. Would have his putter on the deserted island. And there's no putting green. He just snuck that I'm, in there. I, I added the putting green. I it's added Brendan. the stipulation. You added it. You brought your own putting green. I brought, my, I brought my own putting green. <laughs> Brendan, <laughs> Brendan in his odyssey. Just Brendan in his odyssey. You know, yeah, I on you guys. Loyalty. The island's called Mulligan's Island, and I can putt where oh, I want. Oh, oh, good callback. Good callback. I love that. But there's going to be a Costco there pretty soon, dude. Yeah, <laughs> don't talk about Better the get it in now. <laughs> Next to the prison, the state penitentiary. <laughs> oh, God. That'd be kind of funny. I'm just thinking about that now. Costco next to a state penitentiary. That'd be hilarious. Anyways, good. last question. 
in your backyard. So in your, you have your backyard, your entire backyard is a golf hole and you get all the scenery, everything like that. What golf hole is in your backyard? Oh, like what par? No. Like, like if you have hole. a specific golf hole. Oh, it's, specific it's, hole. It could be one that you've seen on TV. It could be one that you play regularly Holy or moly. Moly. <laughs> like, Holy What a question. <laughs> Holy shit. This is, this is one of the better ones. Um, is it as good as cake versus pie, cake and pie, though? Don't hype cake no, and pie. No, no, because <laughs> cake and, yeah. yeah, cake and pie can go, go on forever. Like, you know, this is just objective. Yeah, I, was I mean, I feel, I feel like the, the, you know, the, the easy one would be like number 12 at Augusta. That would be a fun part three to play one. all the time. Um, or like, uh, I would say a part, some sort of part three. Hmm. Interesting. Or, or drivable par four. I think, Int- no, let me take drivable par four would, would, would be it. That would be gotcha. Fun. So Interesting. Give yourself, give yourself all sorts of options. Is it eight iron your favorite club? I know you're bringing it to the island and backtracking. Is that your favorite club? Um, no, I'd probably say driver, driver, sand wedge, putter are my my three favorites. Just, just because just I get my based off of your part, your part three decision. Yeah. No, now I'm. Uh, oh no, no. Yeah. Uh, favorite favorite iron, yeah, eight iron. But like favorite club, no. Wedge wedge would be my favorite club, like a sand wedge. 56. Yeah. 56 bent to 57. Now we're getting in deep. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What happened? To you? 56. <laughs> little 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 heel relief, little heel relief taken off. You know, it takes to the grind wheel, all sorts. <laughs> oh boy. You guys will have to you guys will have to come down to the shop and, and hang out and um I'll show you around, give you a tour. Be Absolutely, fun. man. That'd be that'd be unbelievable. Um I yeah, no, that would be that'd be fantastic. And ten out of ten, I mean, yeah, we're we're for sure. Yeah, well, when we when we get off, we'll uh we'll we'll link up tomorrow and kind of get something, throw out some dates, and see what we can do. In the next, uh, next 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 few weeks and see see how everybody's schedule is. Brian, you're gonna have to pack an overnight bag. Brookline, Brookline to Rhode Island. Oh, that's so far. Yeah, I'll, that's get, so I'll, get, far. I'll get all my yeah, bag. Get all my so bags. Many train, yeah. on so many train passes. Yeah, get my my vaccine, two two negative COVID <laughs> tests. I gotta get. <laughs> yeah, better have better have your card on you. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, Jonathan, we appreciate you so much for coming on, my man. This has been fantastic. It is always great to have fellow New England boys on. Well, you're the first one, uh, fellow New England boy. But hey, we I'm are glad, so I'm happy. Glad I'm the first, but yeah, we we are yeah, so thank, happy. Thank that you, you so much. On. This was an absolute blast, guys. I, I really enjoy it, and I uh, hope we can uh, hope we can do it again. But if not, we'll we'll definitely hang around the studio and then go play some golf. Well, we Absolutely. all look close yeah. enough. We could all do like a live one at this point. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we it was probably, supposed, it was supposed it was, to be live. We were planning there on were, live, there were rumors but, that there was maybe going to be a live one, but maybe next time we'll do it live. Yeah, it's, I'm a golf. It's, it's tough to invite a, a stranger to to your basement. Well, no. Maybe next two. Maybe live maybe. podcast. We'll get the microphones in two each cart, and we'll do a live golf show. Ooh, there we go. Now we're talking. I love he's, it. He's speaking my language. And, it, and we'll get hold. With, hold well, now we also got Tim. And and we got we got Timmy too. So it's gonna be five of us. Tim. Timmy just Perfect. walking. Five. Next. Some will be easily. <laughs> Well, some one of us will be walking next. It's like the uh, the the lady, the 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 people who do it for the European tour. How they have like that huge stick now, and they walk next. Yes, <laughs> holding the holding the boom mic. Yeah. I'll, I'll be the boom guy. I'm, I'm all in. Yeah, I love it. But Jonathan, we really appreciate you coming on, man. Everyone, please go check out Spargo Golf on Instagram. If you ever ever want a custom built club. You guys do fantastic uh, uh, wedge. I forget the name of it. Wet- uh, stamping. Yeah, my yeah. man Stevie does all the stamping. Think, he's the, yeah, he's the, the, he's the, he's the mad man behind the hammer. I mean, they, they look fantastic. So he's got, he's stamping, got some serious skill. Custom built clubs need a fitting. I mean, what he just described to us three hours of intense, but I mean, not intense, but like actually building off your game sounds amazing. So John, again, thank you so much. We really appreciate it. 
Man, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Appreciate it. Perfect.